Now, hitting the road and finding great art is one thing, but when you find it in a small festival right in your own backyard, that's a bonus. The summer art festival season is running really hot right now. I'm so lucky to, by chance, meet some true artists just by dropping in on a local art show. At this recent art festival in Denver, I ran into an old friend and met a couple new ones. I had met Tate Hamilton about a dozen years ago at an art festival in Golden, Colorado, and we gelled immediately. His style has gone a complete overhaul since we first met, and I must say, the new look is so personal, so organic in its form. This year so far? It was good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good place. You know, it's a good place to buy art. Um, uh, it's always crowded down here. So, yeah, it's a good show. So tell me about your urban landscapes here. New York City. Um, I go to New York. And I take pictures and I use them as reference when I do all these paintings here. And uh, uh, just various places, Bryant Park, for instance. Uh, Midtown, New York City, that's Greenwich Village there. Uh, just different places around the city. And then I bring them back to my studio in Denver and I paint them. And one of the other things is I like muted tones. So I only use five colors and I combine those colors constantly to mute my tones down. Yeah, it seems like this your style can almost go in any decor really. Oh, I yeah, like it. It's it's not it's kinda understated but but real. Yeah. He opens up about other recent festivals. Oh my god. Uh, Fort Worth. That's a huge one. 250,000 people show up for that show. Um, St. James Court, it's in Kentucky. Huge show. Um, it's one of the top in the, the nation. And let's see, Rittenhouse Square in Philadelphia. Um, that's an excellent show. It's downtown. I asked him about selling his work online. Well, I use Fine Art America, and uh, I've sold a few originals via Fine Art America, but they also do prints of my work, and I, so I've sold prints, lots of prints. customer says, uh, you know, I sure would like this in Jaclay. They'll do a Jaclay. And when he gets to talking about painting, his passion shows through. Uh, I paint wet on wet, and basically what that means is I sit down and I do, or actually I stand, and I do the entire painting in one standing. So it may take me, uh, on, a, on a piece this big, three foot by four foot, ten hours to do. But I'll finish the entire piece in one day. Check out Tate's beautiful work online. Now it's time to check out some stunning glasswork by another creative Colorado artist, Michelle Manquin. She's been a glass artist for about 20 years, and this is her third visit to this particular festival. This stuff is real, <laughs> really colorful. The, and this glass, is it kind of just, does it work with you when you're doing it? Does it kind of morph as you're getting the shapes done or do you have a final shape ahead of time? I really head? have no idea what it's going to look like. I just kind of go with it and see how it, how I like it and how it, you know, evolves. And if I don't like it, I turn it into one of my flowers over there. Oh. And if I do like it, I finish it up. <laughs> and I see you, you have a lot of, what, what I just saw, you have returning customers, which is really nice. Yeah, it is nice. Like these there you go. Yeah, there we, you go. We, we've uh, been our customers for years. There's color and light everywhere in her work. She explains how she layers the glass, fires it for about a day, places it in a mold, and fires it again for another nine hours, and then finishes up the piece. You can find Michelle's work listed on theevergreengallery.com. A nice surprise to come across a true visual craftsman. Award-winning artist Steve Harmston. 
His hand-pulled serographs are really a labor of love. The stencil for each color is hand-cut, which is very labor-intensive, and the colors are truly full of radiant luster. Okay, I'm talking with Steve Harmston. Now you're from Washington. I can't pronounce the name of that town. Sammamish. All right, Sammamish. <laughs> Now, I would categorize you as a master silk screener. Well, that's overstating it a bit. I still make plenty of mistakes, and I'm afraid to do a lot of things. But I've been doing it for about 30 years, so I've done my share of mistakes. I mean, I can tell by your quality. I mean, you're just, you have a passion for it. I do. I really like the process. Um, you know, it's very time consuming, and some people have to think you have to have a lot of patience to do it, which I don't have. but. I love cutting the stencils. For me, I can get lost for hours on end just cutting the stencils. Printing is, takes very little amount of time, but the stencil cutting and the prepping the screens is where it all consumes all my days. Right. Uh, and what, what really captures me with it is your, your colors are so bright. Well, I, I do like a lot of color, and the ink I have is fantastic. It's very rich, and it never fades, and I like ex Exploring the colors a little more, so most of the colors you see are not naturally, they're just enhanced. I see you have your wife with you. You guys are on the road constantly, probably. Well, in the last two years, this is pretty much all we do. We do about between 15 and 20 shows a year, and we don't travel too far. We get as far as Kansas City and Chicago, and far south is Houston, and mostly in the northwest, Utah, Arizona in the winter. Uh, the internet helps us quite a bit because some people can't decide to make a purchase that big right away so they go home and get on the internet just like all of us here to have the same thing and they that helps because it gives them some other options and they can reconfirm whether or not they really want the piece that they were looking at at the booth. It's been, it's been a great help. Also check out Steve's blog on his website. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment. Remember, share it with your friends on Facebook. We're really trying to build up those likes. You want to check out the fan mail? This one must be for you.